Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. It is Mardi Gras time. It is time to party. There's nothing wrong in Fukushima. Eat all the seafood you want. This is brought to you by TheMediaSpeaks.com. As a matter of fact, why don't I find us some nice Mardi Gras music? There's nothing to worry about in the world. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, Christelle, do me a favor. Hop in front of the camera. Fukushima's over. Take it off. Oh, wait. I, I can't. Why? It, it, it's after midnight, isn't it? Oh, it's not Mardi Gras. All right. You mean everything's not okay with Fukushima? Guys, welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangie reporting for The Media Speaks. I know it's a silly way to bring off a serious topic, but look, we're about to spend the next half hour is some really unhappy news. Thank you, Christelle. So what we are going to do is start the show with a little bit of humor. Guys, the news I got for you isn't good. And it really is brought to you by TheMediaSpeaks.com and uh, the Arcadia Grill on Mike McLaughlin. All right, guys, I'm not going to kid around anymore. Mardi Gras party time is over, and we have a very serious Fukushima update. Um, FukushimaDiary.com, why doesn't TEPCO analyze fishery products for strontium-90? TEPCO, because it's how it's supposed to be. Well, doesn't that make you feel a whole lot better, friends? It says, the reason why TEPCO doesn't analyze fishery products for strontium-90 is only because it's the rule. TEPCO stated in the press conference 219 2014 Well, don't you all feel a lot better? Having highly contaminated water leaking into the sea, the biological concentration of marine products is one of the most important issues. However... They don't analyze the samples for strontium-90, which is accumulated in bone to cause human consumer, consumer's leukemia, that is blood cancer. Like ordinary food tests of the government, they only analyze for cesium-134 and 137. If I sound like I'm stumbling words, it's because it's written in Japanese and uh, the receptor language is, in fact, English. Um, but what he's saying is, is very, very, very important. They're testing for strontium, not americum, not plutonium, not uranium, not the radioactive iodines, not the ones that my non-physicist self don't even know exist. No, they're testing for those two. Now, cesium-134, I believe it is very important because it's, it decays quicker. It's a definite sign that the uh, element is, in fact, from uh, Fukushima. Among tens of uh, radionuclide, I should say, among tens of the test results, they released strontium-90 data only about a couple, only in about a couple of the samples, I think is what he's trying to say, once in a few months. TEPCO doesn't have the plan to analyze these samples for strontium-90 and other nucleides more frequently, and the reason to refuse the proposal wasn't announced earlier. Well, I can tell you why, because maybe strontium levels are so unbelievably high that they wouldn't dream of really letting you know what they are. Maybe if you knew, then you would, uh, you would understand the terror that is the bone cancer risk that that causes. Um, again, I say this all the time, uh, Chris Busby, I uh, look up Chris Busby Calcium Fukushima. Um, calcium will protect you some from this, but it's not a cure-all. It's not a magic bullet. Um, there is no magic bullet at this point. But one thing you can do is refuse to invest in GE, which is TEPCO, for any reason whatsoever. Um, this is from the uh, Tampa Bay.com. <clears throat> Cooling tubes at the FPL St. Lucie nuke plant show significant wear. Yet another Florida nuclear plant may be in trouble. This is why when people come on my comment line and try to defend nuclear power to me, I am floored by this. How can... First of all, I know due to climategate.com and among others, that man-made global warming is a lie. Put a house beat behind that fact and let the beat fly. Um, the 
the issue here, more than anything else, the issue here is that even if you believe in global warming, the amount of damage that is done if just one nuclear power plant goes red is worse than the accumulated effects that people who believe in global warming can claim even in their own data. Which, again, I believe is flawed due to... I, I know it's flawed. It's not a belief. But even if using their data, nuclear is far more deadly. Second of all, they like to pretend that routine releases of just a little bit of tritium... Look up uh, routine releases nuclear power plants... They like to pretend that this isn't leading to cancer deaths and heart diseases and everything else through the roof, and people, it is. Um, well, if we haven't learned anything from Fukushima and from my Japanese friends, I will get back to it. Let's look at what's happening in our country before everybody listening to this zones out because they think it only matters to Japan and people on the West Coast. More than 3,700 tubes that help coy nuclear reactor at Florida Power and, Saint, and Light St. Lucie facility exhibit where <clears throat> most other similar planes have between zero and a few hundred. Worst case, the tube bursts and spews a radioactive fluid. That's what happened at the San Ofri plant in California two years ago. The plant shut down forever because it would have cost too much to fix. There would be no nuclear without subsidies. That's why the libertarian answer is in fact the same as the green answer. Uh, even libertarians that are foolish enough, of which I am not one of, to uh, not mind the existence of nuclear since they don't want to subsidize anything, the uh, libertarian movement uh, would actually also stop nuclear power plants. Because, again, no one's going to invest millions and billions of dollars into a power plant if they're not going to get their money back when it melts down. And they know it's a when, not an if. Um, FPL says its plan is safe. The rate of wear is slowing and its customers' multi-billion dollar investment in the plant is not in jeopardy. They also said that it was madness to believe that Fukushima could ever suffer the kind of earthquake that caused the meltdown prior to the wave hitting. The bottom line is these components are functioning within their requirements, and if they weren't, they'd be removed from service, said Michael Warden, the FPL spokesman. Well, I feel so much better. He'd never lie. FPL is so confident in St. Lucie's condition that it boosted the power plant's power. The utility acknowledged that we're aggregate wear on the tubes located inside the steam generators. Um, I don't just want to be cavalier here. I don't know if Michael Waldron is dishonest, as I kidded about a second ago, or um, if he's misinformed, which is different. The, the, the maliciousness level is different. Um, Christelle and I like to watch documentaries, and one of the ones we watch are uh, airline uh, disaster documentaries. And oftentimes in it, you'll see that they have a book that says to fix or repair this way. So they fix it this way because this is what the book says to do. That says how to do it. That's what we do. Well, sometimes the nature of the uh, repair is different. For instance, we watched one where the book said it was a good idea to uh, put a caulking or a sealant over a, a leak, but uh, stopping the leak actually hurt the structure of the plane and the wing came off and that's why you don't have chalk airlines in Florida anymore. It's possible that Michael Waldron has seen a certain number of situations like that in the nuclear industry that would lead them to lead him to want to say that these things are safe. But we have seen, even all the way back to the work of um, uh, Karen Silkwood, who is a hero to us all, we know that this kind of thing is a disaster in waiting. Critics say that's like pressing hard on the accelerator even when your car has worn brakes, going back to the article. The damn thing is grinding down, said Daniel Hirsch, a University of California at Santa Cruz nuclear policy lecturer not exactly known as a rightist organization. Who hears me? They must be terrified internally. They've got steam generators that are now literally falling apart. 
Nuclear power plants are like very expensive tea kettles. The reactor heats water. The steam generator turns hot water to steam, which powers a turbine, which makes electricity. <clears throat> the steam generator also uses its thousands of alloy tubes to cool water, which is pumped back to cool the reactor. In that sense, the steam generators are a safety device. One moment, please. The tubes need to be very thin to transfer heat, and they need to be very strong to prevent a meltdown, said Hirsch, who reviewed the tubes' problems at San Ofri and St. Lucie. Steam generators are really critical to safety. It's not a feature that you want to play with. FPL, the state's largest electricity utility, brought in St. Lucie to plan online in 1983, about 50 miles from West Palm Beach. Uh, they installed new steam generators at 140 million, intending them to last until the last until the plant's license expires in 2043. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Each generator contained about 9,000 tubes, which were 50 to 70 feet long. Uh, might I add, if one of them goes belly up, the plant goes belly up. Um, on January 31st, 2012, it says a high radiation alarm went off at Santa Ofri 3 plant in Los Angeles. The tube inside the steam generator had burst, belching irradiated fluid into the containment building. No one was hurt. Yeah, of course, they never, they're not going to get sick later. It's harmless for them, right? The plant went into rapid power reduction and shut down, according to NRC documents. Santa Ofri 3 had received two new steam generators less than a year earlier. After the leak, inspectors found 1,806 tubes worn in 10,284 places. They also found an unusually high number of worn tubes at the nearby San Ofri 2 plant. So these people that are telling you that this is somehow a safe alternative is ridiculous. Um, there's much more, much more to this article. Go to the TampaBay.com and read it. But it says, what happens next? In March, FPL will shut down the reactor and inspect the plant's steam generator tubes for the first time since November 2012. The plant likely will have more tube wear. How much more will determine the next step. If additional tube wear is minor, the FPL might simply fire up the generator and take another look in 18 months. I am not here for my health, people. I could be watching silly stories with my girlfriend. I do these kinds of things because they matter. People in Florida, go read the article. Let's stop this from happening in our country, shall we? Uh, NBCBayArea.com Berkeley girl among California children who contracted polio-like illness. They never say a word about Fukushima. Is there any chance that radiation of this level and this magnitude can cause this kind of thing? Well, I don't know. Let's look up effects of radiation online. Let's look up Belarus deformities or Chernobyl deformities or radioactivity deformities. It says a four-year-old Berkeley girl is among an alarming number of California children who have experienced mysterious polio-like symptoms since 2012. Of course, it couldn't be from Fukushima. Fukushima is perfectly harmless. It's all low. It's all safe. This is a fluke. The fact that it's happening on the West Coast, like I predicted, like Chris Busby, Helen Caldicott, Lauren Murray, Kevin Blanche, we all predicted this. It's just a fluke. We don't know what we're talking about. The parents of Sophia Jarvis, it goes on, say that their daughter suffered paralysis in one arm following a brief respiratory illness. Health experts say a virus related to polio could be responsible. Yeah, I, that's, that's got to be what it is. Dr. Keith Van Haren, a pediatric neurologist from Stanford University's Lucere Packard's Children's Hospital, is working with doctors in Southern California to figure out what is causing the symptoms in California children and will present several cases at the American Academy of Neurology's upcoming meeting. The disease resembles, but it is not the same as polio. This is serious. Most of the children have so far not recovered the use of their arm or leg. When you have looked up the uh, possible cause being radiation, maybe you'll get some idea of what I'm insinuating here. 
Am I saying that one is related to the other? No. What I'm saying is that it's very likely because these are the predictions that we heard would be happening when everybody called the people that predicted it crazy. And now it's happening exactly like they said it would. This is very likely related to Fukushima. I will say that. Uh, Infowars.com, Paul Joseph Watson, PJ Dubs, confirmed Fukushima radiation reaches the rest, rest coast of Canada. Researchers have announced that radioactive isotopes from the Fukushima nuclear disaster have been discovered in seawater west of Vancouver, off the coast of Canada, confirming predictions that the radiation would reach the west coast by 2014. The findings were announced at the annual American Geophysical Union's Ocean Sciences meeting in Honolulu yesterday, dated Feb 26th. John Smith, a research scientist at Canada's Bedford Institute of Oceanography in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, told AGU meeting that since 2011, he and colleagues have measured a radioactive plume from radio from nuclear excuse me complex at ocean monitoring stations west of Vancouver Fukushima's radiation reached Canada before the US on the powerful Kuroshio current it's predicted to flow south and then circle back to Hawaii War reports uh, planet save for those that like to say that I don't have any re uh, sources Samples of cesium-134 and deadly cesium-137, which is why the band is named that, which has a half-life of more than 30 years, were found by the researchers. The good news is that the samples were well below safety limits, although these were massively increased by authorities in the aftermath of Fukushima disaster. And of course, there's a link there. What they do is they tell you that uh, an unsafe level is in fact safe. That way, when they test it, and that's what level comes up, it's miraculously safe. Hey, boo-boo, it's safe. Let's eat the picnic baskets. Ridiculous. We live in a country of idiots to fall for this. The full scale of the danger will not be known until 2016, which is when the cesium radiation is expected to peak. Senior scientist Ken Busler said that the radiation has not yet reached Washington, California, or Hawaii, although researchers are still waiting tests on samples collected earlier this month. Some have suggested April was the time when Fukushima radiation will begin to hit the West Coast. We already know that it has come earlier than that, uh, judging by the uh, tests that have been done for the last year off the coast of California. So, uh, basically, they were using... Now, this is very important. Don't zone out on me here. They were using TEPCO's deliberately fudged numbers to predict when and how strongly the radiation was going to hit America when, in fact, the radioactive release was bigger and much more powerful and, therefore, it hit us sooner and with a uh, much stronger radiation level than they want to admit to as they don't test our seafood from Japan. That is a correct view. Um... It says the full scale of the danger will not be known until 2016, which is when the cesium radiation is expected to peak. Uh, let's not, yeah, we'll just ignore the uh, plutonium, americum, uranium, tritium, but on and on. Yeah, the, we'll just pretend those don't exist, that they don't debilitate your health, even though they do. Senior scientist Ken Busler said that the, I already read that, yesterday the Tokyo Electric Power Company admitted that levels of radiation measured in seawater from around the destroyed nuclear reactor were significantly undercounted, just the latest in a long history of officials deceptively downplaying the threat. Using ocean simulations, experts concluded uh, last summer that the radioactive plume from the nuclear accident in March 2011 would reach the U.S. coastal waters uh, by early 2014. Hey, Top 40 fans, it's early 2014! While publicly scoffing at independent researchers concerned about Fuku radiation, public health authorities have been making preparations which may see as being connected to the ongoing crisis at the nuclear Daiichi, nu the Daiichi nuclear power plant. And of course, we have covered repeatedly how the D uh, DHS has uh, ordered 14 million doses of potassium iodide, which is actually uh, what is used in case of a disaster. 
There are beaches in San Francisco that are practically glowing. And, of course, there's links to all of it. <clears throat> Friends, as we go into 420 here, if you are ever in Canton, Ohio, and you are hungry, go to the Arcadia Grill. Um, it's located on Court Avenue. And you're going to get some of the most delicious food that you've ever had. Do you like ravioli? Great. I love rally, ravioli. And they have maybe the best you'll ever have there. The Italian bread, out of this world. They've got a full bar. They make a drink the way you like a drink made. They remember to put the alcohol in. How many of you go someplace, you get this limp-wristed drink? It's terrible. Go to the Arcadia Grill and get a drink made right. Also, you're going to want something to read while you're there. So go to Facebook.com and look up Mike McLaughlin. M-A-C, laugh, L-A-U-G-F-L-I-N, McLaughlin. You'll find that he writes some of the most amazing short stories you've ever read. And I'd like you to go and let him know you want five stories. He's selling them, I think, in bundles of five. But you get to pick which stories you want. So everybody that buys it might get, like, different stories. And he's really good. So don't be one of the dumb America that doesn't read anymore. Go to Facebook.com and look up Mike McLaughlin. Friends, I've got a few more stories to get to. Um, right here, real quick. China demands Japanese explanation about the other plutonium. There's all this worry about what they're doing in war purposes. And of course, I know that there was a, uh, a fascist uh, empiric element in World War II to Japan. And I know that they're not allowed to have nuclear weapons, blah, 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 blah. But the point is, one of the reasons that um, I think, if I'm reading what she's saying correctly, I think, Helen Colicott is saying that one of the reasons TEPCO is being so secretive is because this is tied to the nuclear weapons industry. But nobody will talk about that. And look at the way this article is written. It's just, why do you think they're hiding so much? Maybe because they were using a lot of this for nefarious purposes, is, is what I'm saying. It's clear here. Zero hedge. I mean, you would at least have to think it. The world has grown tired of the inexorable rise in radiation levels and propaganda talks surrounding nuclear issues in Japan from the government in the last few years since Fukushima changed the nation's future. However, there is another source of nuclear materials that is increasingly angering the Chinese. The tensions and rhetoric from World War I analogs to Nazi comparisons have risen recently. But this time, the Chinese are asking a legitimate question, which is rare for them. If a country claims that it sticks by the th three non-nuclear principles, but at the same time hoards far more nuclear material than it needs, <clears throat> including a massive amount of weapon-grade plutonium, the world has good reason to ask why. After all, Abe and his cabinet have already caused too much trouble to regional peace and stability. TEPCO owes the world an explanation over weapon grade. <clears throat> if a country claims that it sticks by the three non-nuclear principles, oh, it's written twice, I don't know why, but it is. As a signatory of the non-proliferation treaty, Japan should adhere to its international obligation. As the world's only victim of nuclear attacks in the final stage of World War II, it should clearly understand the horrible consequences of nuclear proliferation. And of course, Chinese, uh, they're not going to shut their plants down either. They're just going to pretend it's only a weapons issue. However, five decades are not long enough for the island country where some politicians wish openly or privately for nuclear arms to return the 331 kilograms of weapon-grade plutonium, enough for 40 to 50 nuclear bombs it received from the U.S. during the Cold War. Maybe that's because China's trying to take over the islands that are legitimately Japan's. Some Japanese experts have said that with necessary amounts of weapon-grade nuclear materials, their country is capable of developing nuclear bombs within a year. Yeah, we see how wonderful they handle nuclear advances already, don't we, as the Orient glows. Um, what's more, storing more than necessary nuclear materials is also against the regulations of the nuclear watchdog. So now we've got Japan uh, possibly looking for ways to get nuclear weapons. I, I, we can trust them with that. They've done a great job with everything so far. Um, I want to mention this real quick. Let's go to a nice quote here. This is from Need to Know, Radiation and Risk. 
Let's listen to this sample. And this is from nuclear scientist J.W. Peterman. This is a nuclear scientist. Okay, let's see what he says. I have a lot of viewers who like to take charge of their own health. They do a lot of research. They work to make sure that they've got food supply, that they can prepare for disaster. How do they determine what their exposure is to nuclear reaction and uh, to nuclear radiation? We've talked about the different types. Talk a little bit about the different types of radiation. I don't know if they can determine it because the government has certainly raised the levels of acceptable radiation as soon as this happened, mm -hmm. which I found very, very strange. Mm -hmm. I think the best thing to do is just not live on the West Coast. <laughs> Who has said not to live on the West Coast since the moment this happened? Might it have been the correct views? And everybody wanted to say that I was a nutcase. Nuclear scientist J.W. Peterman. Last thing I want to get to, we're going to go back to the U.S. for a minute. This is terrible news. Georgia, wake up. NuclearPowerDaily.com. Georgia Nuclear Power Plant gets federal loan guarantees. Yeah, the, the nation's on the verge of going bankrupt, and here we go with this BS. Also, friends, there are two things you need to know. First of all, the earthquake, not the tsunami, caused the nuclear meltdown in Fukushima. So if a quake that heavy or almost that severe was to hit Georgia, meltdown. If you're one of these boneheads that still believe the tsunami did it, look this up. I'm not making it up. You can look up the stats I'm about to give you. It'll pop right up on your browser. Startpage.com so that the NSA doesn't snoop as easily. Um, if a number of dams were to break due to an earthquake, due to a terrorist attack, due to whatever, wear and terror, if the infrastructure was to fail and the dams were to break, the likelihood of a nuclear meltdown in these plants in the South are 100%. That is guaranteed for you Kesha fans. This is by their staff writers. The U.S. Department of Energy has formalized $6.51 billion in federal loan guarantees for the expansion of a Georgia nuclear power plant to endanger all of our lives. The federal loan guarantees are to support construction of two new nuclear reactors that are perfectly safe and could never melt down, even though I just explained to you how they could, at the Alvin W. Vodgo Electric Generating Plant near Waynesboro in eastern Georgia, representing the first nu nuclear power project in the nation in nearly three decades. I might I say it shouldn't be happening now. If you people in Georgia do not rise up, you will be burning up. What is wrong with you? Use the thinking part of your brains. U.S. Secretary of Energy Ernst Merniz announced the loan guarantees Wednesday prior to his visit in the Vogel facility Thursday for a ceremony. If we ever need Occupy Nuke plants to step up, this is the day we need that organization to happen. The construction of the new nuclear power facilities like this one, which will promote carbon-free electricity, since man is not warming the planet, that is irrelevant, <clears throat> to well over a million American energy consumers is not only a major milestone, of course, in the administration's commitment to jumpstart the U.S. nuclear power industry and endanger our lives, even when they're running properly routine emissions of tritium giving you and your children cancer. It is also an important part of an all-of-the-above approach to the American energy as we move toward a low-carbon energy future, which is a terrible idea if you're substituting it with nukes. Of these $6.51 billion in loan guarantees, $3.46 billion will go to Georgia Power, a subsidy of Southern Company, and $3.05 billion will go to Oglethorpe Power Company, a partner of Voltco Expansion. How do you help this? Take all of the money that you have invested in them and or mutual funds and <clears throat> pull them out of there. That's how you stop that. Vogel's two existing nuclear reactors with a total capacity of 2,430 megawatts have been in operation since the late 80s. Georgia, if you let this go on, you are going to be glowing and you're only going to have yourselves to blame. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. <clears throat> Sam I.B. DeGangi reporting for The Media Speaks. Friends, thanks for listening. Please share this video. It helps. 
Um, go to the mediaspeaks.com, look up the work of Kyle Court D. Lake and myself, and uh, go to the correct views at hotmail.com. Donate to the show, like the awesome author Mike McLaughlin did, and like our delicious restaurant, the Arcadia Grill, did. And uh, every money, every dollar you give to me goes to a better show, friends. Good night, God bless, and thanks for listening.